Hey guys, it's Jake here with E-Trailer. Today we have a 2023 Chevy Silverado 3500. We're going to be taking a look at and I'm going to show you how to install the B&W gooseneck hitch with the turnover ball. If you're looking for the ultimate way to haul a gooseneck trailer, this is going to be the most ideal hitch. Um, the reason for that is because you obviously can haul gooseneck trailers once you install this in your vehicle, but the B&W hitch also has a companion fifth wheel hitch. So you don't really have to decide between a gooseneck or fifth wheel rails. If you decide to get a fifth wheel trailer or you want to haul one for a friend later on, you can always pick up a B&W companion, which you take the ball out and you slide the B&W companion shank down in here and it locks in and you can haul fifth wheel trailers. Um, it's a really versatile gooseneck hitch that allows you to do multiple different things. B&W is known for having really rugged and tough accessories, and this gooseneck is definitely proof of that. Uh, when installing it, every component is really thick steel. It has a really nice, um, that trademarked gray powder coat finish from B&W. Um, I think it looks really good in the bed of a truck. The safety chain loops are nice and wide, so you can fit the... Uh, the any size safety chain is going to fit on this from whatever trailer you're hauling. This gooseneck hitch is going to have a 30,000 pound gross trailer weight capacity. That's a trailer plus the load included and a 7,500 pound pin weight capacity. That is the coupler on your gooseneck trailer pushing down on the hitch. Now I personally have a B&W hitch in the bed of my truck and my favorite feature is that turnover ball feature. You flip it over, you drop it into place and it's as if there's nothing in your bed. You can slide sheets of plywood, drywall, anything over top of this, and this little cup is gonna catch all the nasty stuff that'll fall down in there, and you don't have to worry about um, the opening in your gooseneck getting dirty or anything like that. If you decide to take the ball out completely, it also drops straight through to the ground, so there's, it won't hold any moisture or anything on the inside. It may not be a bad idea to put some white lithium grease or something on the inside of this opening um, because we have seen people that have not removed this, they keep it up like this for the entire life of the gooseneck and these can tend to seize up inside. So um, put some grease on the inside of here, put some grease on the ball and you should be perfect. Now you want to check with the owner's manual of your vehicle to be sure what it can handle uh, when it comes to towing and you want to pick the lowest amount between the two. So if your truck has a lower amount than 30,000 pounds gross towing, um, you want to go with your truck's capacity, not the hitches. Um, to a little bit more about the hitch, there is a nice coating on this ball so that it'll help resist rust and corrosion. I do recommend putting some grease on top of the ball and in, on the inside of the coupler, it'll help save this steel longer. Um, if you are gonna be hauling those heavier trailers, I highly recommend getting some suspension enhancements. You can get a set of Timberins, um, a set of Sumo Springs. Those are gonna be your non-adjustable, but then if you want some adjustability in your suspension, you can do the Roadmaster Active Suspension or a set of airbags. And when it comes to the installation of this kit, the biggest difference between this and other kits available for this truck is that this kit is not gonna have any visible brackets that you have to mount on the side of the frame rails. Um, the other kits that are available, you'll have two brackets that go on each frame rail on either side of it that sandwich it. Those will come in contact with airbag brackets if you decide to put a set of airbags on later on or any other accessory that mounts to the frame rails. This kit is gonna be a lot more involved, a little bit more difficult to put in because it has so many components to put together. Um, the hardest part about this installation is going to be getting the bolts to go in the top of your frame rails. There are um, pre-welded nuts inside your frame for this exact hitch to bolt inside of. And um, if you don't get the holes cleaned out well enough or if your truck is a couple years old, you have to clean them out in order for those bolts to go smoothly down in there. Um, but after it's all installed, I would much rather have the look that this hitch has versus the others. But with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into the installation and we'll show you how we did it. To begin our installation, you need to lower your spare tire and remove this heat shield. There's gonna be two bolts holding the heat shield on. We'll use a 13 millimeter socket to get them removed. This is gonna just give us more room to be able to work up here. Um, you definitely have to remove the spare tire. The heat shield, um, the instructions say to remove it, so we're going to. Okay. 
we'll set this off to the side. Now we're gonna have four bolts that are holding our heat shield that's above our axle in place. We'll have to remove all four of those. We'll have one here, one at the opposite end, and two on top of the frame rail. Now we can take this heat shield down, remove it, we will not be reinstalling it. We need to measure for our four inch hole. We'll measure up from the back of our bed, follow the measurements in the instructions for the size bed that you have. Uh, we'll measure up. We're gonna add about a eighth of an inch because of the spray and bed liner is pretty thick there at the bottom, or back at the back of our bed. We'll mark that. And we're on the center rib because it's about the center of the truck, but we'll measure side to side, split the difference. And, um, yep, looks like we're going to be right in the center of this rib. But that's how you get your side to side measurement and front to back. Now we'll take a four inch hole saw with a pilot drill bit and drill a hole out. Now we'll take a file, we'll clean up these edges so we don't have any sharp edges. And we can take a paint marker. You can also just use clear spray paint if you want um, and coat this edge so that we don't have any rust or corrosion later on. In our wheel well, we'll have to remove three T15 Torx bit screws uh, this is to allow more access to the frame so we can pull this out. Now before we go back underneath our truck and get our rails installed, we need to get them set up. You can see we've done one here. We need to put these plates underneath the bottom of these rails. Um, you want to make sure that your seam weld is on the bottom. Take our bracket, slide it over till the holes line up. We're only going to be doing one side of this because we're going to need all the space we can get to slide this up in place and put the other side on. Take these large bolts that come in our kit, slide them through, and thread on our flange nuts. We're gonna to torque these to the specifications in our instructions. Before we put our cross members up, we're going to lower our exhaust to give us more room to work above it. Now with our exhaust lowered, we can get our cross members up into place. Slide it up over the exhaust, and we'll try going through the other way first. Set it up on our frame rail. There we go. And we'll rest it on top of the exhaust for now. We'll have the other side of our bracketry that we need to put up into place. Slide it up. Now with the bracket up there, you take these bolts and slide them through. And we'll take a flange nut and put one on each side. We're going to repeat the same process for our rear bar. Now we're gonna to prep to lift our center section up into place. We'll have to put this bracket on the outside of each side of our rails. I'm gonna stick it through and then push the bolt back just enough to where it's flush. Same thing on the other one. And then we'll repeat that process over here. 
For our center section, before we put it up in place, the smaller section is going to be, which is this part here, is going to face the front of the vehicle. The larger fit part will be facing the rear. Um, our latch was originally on this other side. You just want to take it out, put it on this side, and then put your two bolts in. Now we can raise it up into place. This piece can get kind of heavy. That's why we have a strap up there um, to be able to help us. But we should, we might be able to get it. There we go. Found the hole and then slide our brace back over. And slide our bolts through to hold this in place. We need to go into our wheel wells. Now you can unbolt it like we did before. If you'd like a little bit more space, you can take the whole wheel well liner out. Um, it's not a huge deal. Ours is covered in rock dust, so it is gonna be a little bit of a messy job. But this bracket right here, there's going to be a spot for two of these bolts, the shorter bolts that come in your kit, and there's weld nuts inside the frame that we need to slide these down and thread them in place. And once you get all of the eight bolts in the top of your rails down into your frame rails, um, we're ready to tighten and torque the remaining hardware underneath. You wanna leave those loose so that the hitch can kinda of, um, tighten itself all together and then we'll tighten the ones on the top of the frame rail. If you have trouble getting them in, we had trouble with one of them. Uh, what you have to do is you just have to move the rails back and forth and, and side to side to be able to um, shimmy it enough to get that bolt to line up correctly. Another thing that we discovered is this frame coating that they put on these GM trucks is really goopy. You can see it um, gooped up all over the frame. Try to get that cleaned out of those holes before you put any of your bolts in because it's going to gunk them up and you're not going to be able to get the bolts to start. But with all eight of ours in, we can tighten all the rest of our hardware. With everything torqued down on our hitch, while we're still under here, we're gonna go ahead and put our handle on. Your handle, you wanna just make sure that the, this part is facing down. We'll slide it up our over top of our frame rail. Slide the bolts in this side. We have to pull it out a little bit. We'll just pull it out in the lock position. Put the bolt in the square head side and put the flange nut on the other side. Now with our handle tightened down on the inside, uh, we went ahead and threw our screws back in real quick just to test out um, how how close this fabric is to our handle. Um, on my personal truck, I didn't cut this because I didn't like the look of it, but on this one, it's a little tighter. When you go to pull the, the gooseneck out, it hits it before it fully um, releases. So we're gonna have to cut it. Um, we need to cut about two inches on either side of where the handle's at, and it's right here. So we'll cut here. With this opening, you can see I put a little bit larger space over here for the owner's thumb to go. Um, you can pull it out all the way. There we go. And that's in the unlocked position. You can go up, flip your ball over, and then lock it back into place. Now we can take a very small drill bit and drill a pilot hole in the center of our safety chain loops. That's gonna help us guide our larger drill bit up to 11 sixteenths. Now we'll come up top on our bed and work our way up with drill bits up to 11 sixteenths.
Once your holes are drilled out to 11 16 we'll take our safety chain loop and test out each one. You want it to be a nice loose fit because we're gonna have springs on the bottom that'll keep it down and you don't wanna to have to try to force it up. But check both of them. And once you're all good, you can take some more of that paint and coat the insides of the holes. Now we can come back and tighten and torque all the eight bolts that are attaching our rails of our gooseneck to the top of our frame rails. Torquing these down are gonna to be tough, but um, if you have to pick up a crow's foot, you can do that. Um, but it may be easier to do it. Actually, you can only do it from the outside of the frame. So we'll have to figure out a way to do that. Now the instructions do state if you can't get a torque wrench in here to tighten these bolts or to torque them down, uh, really the only way to do it otherwise is to lift the bed off, uh, which is a lot of work and uh, most people aren't gonna be able to do that at their house. Um, so the alternative is you just take a normal 18 millimeter wrench and you get it as tight as you can. Um, you shouldn't go over that torque rating if you're just using a hand tool. Be sure you're not using an extension like a breaker bar pipe or anything like that. You just wanna use um, the wrench itself. Now back underneath, we'll take our springs for our safety chain loops, take the wider end, slide it over the spring, then take the nut and thread it on the bottom. When we tighten these, um, you can see we've already done the other side. You wanna tighten them until the, this nut is about flush with the bottom. You just wanna make sure that there's more than enough um, length to be able to pull out. And with these larger safety chain loops, that's more than enough. With all of our hardware installed and everything torqued down, that's gonna do it for installation. All we have to do is put our heat shield back and our spare tire. Well guys, that's gonna do it for a look at and installation of the BMW turnover ball gooseneck hitch on our 2023 Chevrolet Silverado 3500.